Good morning, everyone. It's Lee Henson, president and founder of Agile Dad, and it's time for today's episode of the Daily Stand Up. So, without any further ado, let's get started. It's Monday. It's a brand new week. Everybody should be excited. I hope you're having an amazing kickoff to your week. I hope your weekend was fantastic. There are lots of really, really cool things going on. So, I wanted to start this week with a request. So, I got a request from one of our regular subscribers. I appreciate it. That asked me, hey, you know, uh, will you tell us more about what we can do to be a more effective agile coach? They say, it seems like your company works with a lot of large companies. We're trying to buff up the way that we can get our coaching done. So what are some tips or tricks that you have? And, you know, I wish these tips would help you get the perfectly, you know, perfectly chiseled physique, right? Um, this isn't about personal fitness today. It's about emotional and mental wellness. It's about the first principle of the Agile Manifesto. It's about individuals and interactions over processes and tools. And I think that sometimes we forget some of the very basic things that we should be doing. So in order for us to really be an effective coach, there, there are some key things that we need to be doing. And I think it, you know, using a sports analogy is, is rather cool because if you think about it from that way, a coach's job isn't to get in and do things for the team. The coach's job is to help the team to be successful in the things that they do. So I think the first one that I want to talk about, and these are in, in no set order, but, but I love the first one. So we'll cover first five today. We'll cover the second five tomorrow for a total of 10 tips. So here we go. Number one, I love this one. Kick off with a warm introduction. So when I'm talking about a warm introduction, I think it's important for the team to realize who you are, what your background is, what type of things you do. You know, the truth is when you meet the team, they may not be interested in having a coach or they may not be interested in having, you know, agile lessons. They, they have project deadlines. They got personal objectives. They got goals. They got things that are going on. They've tried this before. They give you the eye roll, right? The truth is how you are perceived by the team and introduced to the team reflects a lot uh, and their response reflects a lot on how well you'll wind up performing. So I think that if someone introduces you and says, yeah, hello team, this is Bill uh, and he's going to be your agile coach. Okay. You know, your likelihood of success drops or diminishes greatly. But if, if Bill comes in and says, Hey, I'm Bill. And I just want to spend some time with you to see what we can do together to make your life easier. You know, it, it comes up better. If someone comes in and says, hey, I'm Mary, and uh, I'm an agile guru with years of experience, and I'm going to tell you what you're doing wrong. Obviously, that's not going to work. The, the introduction is so important in a way that you insert yourself in with the team. You know, there's several times where people feel like they don't have a good voice or people feel like people aren't listening so one of these exercises, whether it's an exercise in political correctness, social injustice, it doesn't matter what it is, the exercise is to make sure that everyone's voice is heard. And I think that part of that has a lot to do with your introduction. So there you go. Number two is to realize that Agile is not dogmatic. Agile is not a religion. If you go into a place of, a place of work and you try to turn it into a place of worship, Things are not going to go well. I think when you when you go in and you see the people who are constantly throwing around all the buzzwords, handing out a copy of Agile or Dummies to everyone, and 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 tossing the acronyms of TDD and WIP and and you know establishing immediate Kanban boards and and running with you know it it becomes it becomes cumbersome. The truth is. Each team is a group of unique individuals and they all want to approach Agile differently. They all have different things they want to do. So I think it's important for you to understand how they approach Agile and what they're trying to do. And this is very important. This is something a lot of my coaches have struggled with in the past. And it's turning on the opportunity to listen to goals that the team has for things they want to improve instead of jumping straight in and doing the things that you think the team needs to do first. I know that sounds silly, but you have to have some balance because if they have some goals and things that they're struggling with, those are probably the areas you should you know, tap into first, even if it's not commonly the area that you would address first, which is 
which is interesting because that's how you're going to have that camaraderie and that effective respect that that will grow and a team will like you instead of coming in and having to fight a constant uphill battle. Coming in at number three, speaking of respect, is to demonstrate respect. It's one of the five values of Scrum, and I think it's important for you to show the team that you respect them and you respect their work just as much as it is for them to respect you. You need to treat the team like they're the group of experts that are showing you and that you're listening to them. You need to demonstrate that they do know what they're doing and that you're not here to change their process. You're here to improve what they do, to make life easier, to empower them to have the tools they need to be successful. And I think that sometimes when we come in, uh, that we may be considered disrespectful as a coach. So I think it's important for us to realize that coaches are intended to be respected and respectful, and that if we want to build that relationship, there's, there's certain things that we need to do. Yes. Um, instead of rephrasing, instead of using, you know, I all the time, or instead of saying you are doing this, you know, uh, it should always be around we. Uh, you instantly become part of the team when you're the coach. Coming in at number four is step back to see the big picture. Let me tell you, this is a big offense that a lot of people make. I think that if you are always, you know, uh, getting sucked in to all the things that the team is stressing about, you get too close to see what the real problem is. I, I often refer to the Scrum Master Agile Coach as a doctor. Your job is to listen to the symptoms, view the symptoms, make a diagnosis, and then write the correct prescription. And I think sometimes we don't approach work that way. Sometimes we go in guns a blazing and we try to just dig in and find a problem when the truth is it's better for us to take a step back and brainstorm and try to figure out exactly what's happening. So sometimes taking a step back allows us to see things further into the future, as crazy as that sees. I think it's just the way that we think and process information. And I think that if we Really step back, do some brainstorming, use the grow method, ask the team what their goals are, you know, find out how close they are to those goals with the reality, you know, put together some options on a whiteboard, do a brainstorming session and create a path that the team agrees to so that they could see that you're invested in them. I like that. And number five for today is make sure you're asking powerful questions that spark ideas. You know, I've seen a number of coaches who go in and the first thing they do is start asking yes or no questions. And I'm like, oh, you're driving me crazy, right? Because you never get anything more than yeah, well, or no, or yeah. It's like, ah, oh. you want to make sure you're asking how or what questions, you know, how did it get this way? How do you think it could be a bit be better? What can we do to improve things? You know, and, and I think that if you ask those open-ended, powerful questions, that you're going to stimulate thinking about the way things are. And sometimes quick simulation of the way things are is a heavy reminder to let people know, hey, this is how things are now. And are we happy with the way things are now? And I think those are all important. So for your top five, we said, number one, you need to make sure that you're, you, you have the right introduction, that you come in on the right footing and that everybody knows who you are and that you're happy and they're happy. Number two, you can't treat agile as a religion, even though it's, it's easy to, you, you need to make sure you don't fall into that trap. Number three, demonstrate and be respectful, right? Make sure you're respectful to them. They're respectful for you. Number four, step back and see the big picture. Sometimes taking a step back just outside of the forest lets us see the actual forest. <laughs> and then number five, ask powerful questions to really brainstorm and get good idea, uh, get good conversation flow. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Daily Stand-Up. If you did, tune in tomorrow so you can hear 6 through 10. We've got five more ideas to help you become a more effective Agile coach. And as always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.